Hello, welcome to Learning Studio. The traditional view is that science involves empirical observation, theory formulation, theory testing, theory revision, prediction, control, the search for lawful relationships, and the assumption of determinism, some prominent philosophers of science. However, take issue with at least some aspects of the traditional view of science. Among them are Karl Popper and Thomas Kuhn. In this video we will discuss only Karl Popper's view. Thomas Kuhn concept will be shared in a separate video. If you want to watch visit our channel. Karl Popper Karl Popper disagreed with the traditional description of science in two fundamental ways. First, he disagreed that scientific activity starts with empirical observation, according to Popper. The older view of science implies that scientists wander around, making observations and then attempt to explain what they have observed. Popper showed the problem with such a view. 25 years ago, I tried to bring home point to a group of physics students in Vienna by beginning a lecture with the following instructions. Take pencil and paper, carefully observe, and write down what you have observed. They asked, of course, what I wanted them to observe. Clearly the instruction. Observe is absurd. Observation is always selective. It needs a chosen object, a definite task, an interest, a point of view, a problem. So for Popper, scientific activity starts with a problem, and the problem determines what observations scientists will make. The next step is to propose solutions to the problem which is called conjectures and then attempt to find fault with the proposed solutions known as refutation. Popper saw scientific method as involving three stages, one problems, two theories proposed, solutions, and three criticism. Principle of falsifiability, according to Popper. The demarcation criterion that distinguishes a scientific theory from a non-scientific theory is the principle of falsifiability. A scientific theory must be refutable, contrary to what many believe. If any conceivable observation agrees with a theory, the theory is weak, not strong. Popper spent a great deal of time criticizing the theories of Freud and Adler. For this reason, without exception, everything a person does can be seen as supportive of either of these theories. This is because those theories are so vague that no matter what happens, their verification can be claimed, according to Popper. It is also vagueness that prevents a meaningful test of the horoscopes created by astrologers. Popper contrasted such theories with that of Einstein which predicts precisely what should or should not happen if the theory is correct. Thus, Einstein's theory, unlike the theories of Freud and Adler, and astrological predictions, was refutable and therefore scientific. Thus, for Popper, for a theory to be scientific, it must make risky predictions, predictions that run a real risk of being incorrect. Theories that do not make risky predictions or that explain phenomena after they have already occurred are, according to Popper, not scientific, in addition to vagueness. Another major problem with many psychological theories such as Freud's and Adler's is that they engage more in postdiction, explaining phenomena after they have already occurred, than in prediction, whether due to vagueness or the emphasis on postdiction. These theories make no risky predictions and are in no danger of being falsified. They are, therefore, unscientific, according to Popper. It is a theory's incorrect predictions, rather than its correct ones, that cause scientific progress. This idea is nicely captured by Marx and Goodson in 1976. In real scientific life theories typically contribute not by being right but by being wrong. In other words, scientific advance in theory as well as experiments tends to be built upon the successive corrections of many errors, both small and large. Thus the popular notion that a theory must be right to be useful is incorrect, in Popper's view. All scientific theories will eventually be found to be false and will be replaced by more adequate theories. It is always just a matter of time. For this reason, the highest status that a scientific theory can attain, according to Popper, is not yet disconfirmed. Papirian science is an unending search for better and better solutions to problems or explanations of phenomena. Brett made this point effectively. We tend to think of science as a body of knowledge which began to be accumulated when men hit upon scientific method. This is a superstition. It is more in keeping with the history of thought to describe science as the myths about the world which have not yet been found to be wrong. Does this mean Popper believed that non-scientific theories are useless? Absolutely not. He said, historically speaking all, or very nearly all, scientific theories originate from myths. And, a myth may contain important anticipations of scientific theories. I thus believe that if a theory is found to be non-scientific, 
or metaphysical. It is not thereby found to be unimportant, or insignificant, or meaningless, or nonsensical. Popper used falsification as a demarcation between a scientific and a non-scientific theory but not between a useful and useless theory. Many theories in psychology fail Popper's test of falsifiability either because they are stated in such general terms that they are confirmed by almost any observation or because they engage in postdiction rather than prediction. Such theories lack scientific rigor but are often still found to be useful. Freud's and Adler's theories are examples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like. Share. Comment and subscribe.